Hello, and welcome to Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. My name is Rob. I'm a tour guide and the founder of Trip Hacks DC Tours. On this channel, I share my best tips, tricks, and hacks for visitors who want to explore Washington, D.C. And I wanted to make this video to share 50 things that you can do when you visit. With only a few exceptions, these are all things that you can do pretty much year round. So whenever you have your trip planned, you can do almost everything on this list. And remember that these 50 things are only the tip of the iceberg. So if you live in or have been to DC before and have any others that you wanna add to the list, leave a comment under the video and let everyone know. With that said, let's get started. We have to start off this list with the three branches of the federal government. A capital tour is a must do in my opinion. Standing under the dome and looking up at the art and architecture of such a beautiful building is an iconic DC experience. There are actually two different ways that you can tour the Capitol, so check out the video description because I made an entire video describing how to do it. Across the street is the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land. The building is open to the public on most weekdays. And on oral argument days, the public can actually sit in and watch the arguments. So check it out if you're a lawyer, a law student, or just someone who's really into this stuff. And of course, there's the White House. This is probably the most famous single building in all of Washington, D.C. And the public is able to go inside, but it does require quite a bit of planning and advanced work. The public tour of the White House is not one of my personal favorite things to do, but it is extremely popular with tourists. If you're lucky enough to know someone who works for the White House, taking the much more exclusive West Wing tour is a bucket list experience though. Now, another thing that Washington DC is known for is being an amazing museum city. Let's start with the Smithsonian National Museum of American History, one of my personal favorites. They've got the original Star Spangled Banner, Julia Child's Kitchen, the President's and First Lady's collections, and this very buff looking statue of George Washington, among many other things. The National Air and Space Museum has all kinds of aviation and space artifacts, from the Wright brothers' first plane to the lunar landings and beyond. It's currently under heavy renovation, but will be fully reopened in 2025. The National Museum of African American History and Culture is the newest Smithsonian Museum and an amazing collection of exhibits that explore the African American experience. The Sweet Home Cafe is part of the cultural side of the museum and one of my personal favorite spots for lunch on the National Mall. The National Gallery of Art is a world-class art museum with art collections and exhibits from European and American artists from the Renaissance to the present. It's not part of the Smithsonian, but it is on the National Mall and free to visit. The U.S. Holocaust Museum is a deeply moving museum that's designed to educate visitors about this very dark period of world history. The exhibits are all powerful and poignant and the shoes get me every time. The National Museum of Natural History has over 148 million objects and specimens, which makes it the largest collection of natural history in the world. It's also the most popular museum on the National Mall, especially for kids. So whether you're into the bones, the bugs, or the gems, there's gonna be something here for you. The Hirschhorn is a Smithsonian art museum featuring contemporary and modern art housed in a unique circular building right in the middle of the National Mall. And I'll just say that modern art can be polarizing, so you'll probably either love it or hate it. The National Portrait Museum hosts a unique mix of portraits of people who have shaped our country. And in that way, it's a really interesting art slash history hybrid museum. America's Presidents is definitely a fan favorite. In the same building is the Smithsonian American Art Museum. It's somewhat similar to the National Gallery of Art, 
except that this one is specifically focused on art created by American artists in the United States. And a bonus spot is the Kogod Courtyard, located right in between these last two museums. It's a great spot to relax, drink a cup of coffee, and think about all the great art and exhibits that you've just seen. Technically part of the American Art Museum, but located across the street from the White House is the Renwick Gallery, which is a museum of contemporary crafts and decorative art. It's in a beautiful building and has a lot of really cool rotating displays. Back on the National Mall, the National Museum of the American Indian is a deep dive into the history, culture, and art of Native American groups in the Americas. And it's another solid spot if you're exploring museums and starting to feel a little hungry. The first museum on this list that is not free, but still potentially worth the price of admission, is the International Spy Museum. The Spy Museum is unique and interactive and has all kinds of spy gadgets and stories, and it even gives you a chance to take on your own spy mission. And for that reason, it's super popular with kids and adults who like to act like kids. In my opinion, the most underrated museum in all of Washington, D.C. is the National Postal Museum. It's a bit of a niche museum that's all about the history of the U.S. Postal Service. It's also a mecca for stamp lovers and has some of the largest collections of stamps in the entire world. Planet Word is a museum of language arts and is one of the newest museums in D.C. One of the coolest things about this museum is how interactive the exhibits are. You can learn about all kinds of languages through sight, sound, and touch. Admission is free, but donations are appreciated. Back on the National Mall, another art museum is the National Museum of African Art. This museum has over 9,000 pieces of traditional and modern art from Africa. And right nearby is the National Museum of Asian Art. This was formerly known as the Freer Sackler Gallery and is a big museum dedicated specifically to Asian artists. This museum houses the Peacock Room, which just might be one of the single coolest rooms in all of DC. The Folger Shakespeare Library is wrapping up a major renovation and will reopen later in 2023. It's home to the world's largest collection of Shakespeare's works. There's also an amazing theater where you can see live some of the Bard's plays. All right, now before we continue with the list, can I ask you for a favor? If you're digging this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. I've been posting Washington DC travel tips videos for the past six years. This YouTube channel doesn't have a single sponsor. I don't do paid ads or brand deals or accept anything for free in exchange for being in a video. Everything that I do is for the single goal of helping you have the best trip. Now, after museums, most Washington DC visitors probably think of the National Monuments and Memorials. The Lincoln Memorial is an awe-inspiring monument to our 16th president. It is the most visited site in all of Washington DC. And for good reason. Stand on that top step and take in the iconic view of the National Mall. Every Washington DC visitor has to make at least one stop at Lincoln. The Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial is one of the few major monuments for a person who was not a former president. This monument honors Dr. King's commitment to justice, democracy, hope, and love. It features this huge outdoor statue and quotes from his iconic speeches. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial is a sobering remembrance to those who served in Vietnam. The black granite wall is etched with over 58,000 names, Americans who were killed or missing in action during the war. The three service members honor those who survived. And the Women's Memorial honors the women who served. The Korean War Memorial features 19 sculptures of American soldiers in a Korean rice field. Some people call these statues haunting or ghost-like. And in 2022, the Americans killed in the Korean War were added to a big semicircular perimeter towards the back of the memorial. 
the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorial is a giant outdoor sprawling memorial honoring the life and times of FDR. It's one of the largest and most comprehensive presidential memorials, which is fitting because FDR did have the longest presidency. The National World War II Memorial is a grand circular memorial that features 56 columns, two grand archways, and a victory fountain right in the middle to celebrate our victory in the war. All those who served, whether in the military, in the Atlantic or Pacific theater, or as a farmer or a factory worker is honored at this amazing memorial. The Jefferson Memorial is an impressive domed structure based on Roman architecture. It pays homage to Thomas Jefferson, founding father, author of the Declaration of Independence, third president, among many other things. All of these monuments and memorials are free and open to the public 24 hours a day. But the best way to see them, in my opinion, is on a small group guided tour. And whether that's with me or any of the other great local tour companies in DC, seeing these monuments all at once and with a guide will give you the best experience and honestly, best memories. In front of the National Academy of Sciences is the Albert Einstein Memorial. This one captures Einstein's creativity and brilliance. There's also a really cool celestial map on the floor of the monument that shows the position of the stars in the night sky on the date that the monument was inaugurated. Stand in the middle and speak directly towards Einstein to hear a really cool echo chamber. On the Arlington side of the Potomac River is the U.S. Marine Corps Memorial, or the Iwo Jima. This huge, impressive memorial is based on the famous photograph of six American Marines raising a U.S. flag after the Battle of Iwo Jima. This one's a little farther away from the other monuments, but worth a visit if you can swing it. The tallest monument and tallest building in Washington, D.C. is the Washington Monument. Since Washington, D.C. doesn't have any other tall buildings, if you get a ticket and go up to the observatory, you can get great views in all directions. Another great view that does not currently require any ticket is to go to the top of the old post office tower. It's only about half as tall as the Washington Monument, but has great views of the Washington Monument and down Pennsylvania Avenue. And it's usually way less crowded than the Washington Monument when you go. Now, let's run through some big federal government sites that are kind of like museums, but not called museums. Starting with the Library of Congress, the largest library in the world. The Library of Congress officially serves as the research branch of Congress. And the Jefferson Building across the street from the Capitol is one of the most beautiful architectural buildings in the entire city. The National Archives is America's record keeper. It's actually the headquarters of a really important government agency that has a lot of responsibilities. But the building that you will visit in DC is where you can go to see the original copies of the Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and Bill of Rights. The US Botanic Garden is kind of like a museum of plants. It's one of the oldest botanic gardens in North America. And make sure to head across the street to Bartoldi Park which has a historic fountain and a great collection of cool local plants. Now, let's talk about some other parks, gardens, and outdoor sites. Arlington National Cemetery is the final resting place for over 400,000 American military members, veterans, and their families. The most famous landmarks here are the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, where you can see the changing of the guard on the hour, as well as JFK's Eternal Flame and the Arlington House. The National Zoo is part of the Smithsonian Institution and one of the best free admission zoos in the US. It is home to over 2,700 animals and currently only one of three zoos in all of the United States that has giant pandas. The century-old birdhouse 
also just underwent a major renovation and is one of the best hidden gems in the zoo. The National Arboretum is essentially a big museum of trees. It's similar to the US Botanic Garden, but much, much bigger, spread out over 446 acres. Two of the most popular things here are the National Bonsai Museum and the Capitol Columns. The Tidal Basin is best known for its stunning display of cherry blossoms for a week or two in the spring, but still worth a visit year round. If you sign up for a monuments tour, you will inevitably find yourself on the Tidal Basin to see several of the national monuments and memorials. Rock Creek Park is a massive urban park right in the middle of the city. At over 2,000 acres, Rock Creek Park is twice the size of Central Park in New York City, but much less famous. Inside the park, you'll find hiking, biking, horseback riding, picnic areas, and even a planetarium. The National Gallery of Art Sculpture Garden is located right next to the National Gallery of Art. It's a beautifully landscaped garden that has sculptures and outdoor art from some very prominent artists. You'll also find an ice skating rink here in the winter and jazz in the garden in the summer. A bonus spot is the Hirschhorn Sculpture Garden, which is located right across the National Mall and has even more outdoor art that you can check out. If you're into city walks, Georgetown is probably the best known neighborhood in DC among tourists. Because in a single neighborhood, you can see historic sites like the Old Stone House. You can see classic Washington DC row houses. There's plenty of shopping and dining options and a beautiful waterfront park where you can go kayaking in the summer or ice skating in the winter. Nearby along the Potomac River is the Kennedy Center, one of the best performing arts venues in the country. It hosts a wide range of performances from theater to dance, ballet, opera. And while it may not be quite as famous as Broadway in New York City, Performances at the Kennedy Center are top notch. The Washington National Cathedral is a neo-Gothic masterpiece. It's one of the top 10 largest cathedrals in the entire world. It offers amazing architecture and sweeping views of Washington DC if you go up to the top of the tower. This is a great site, even for those who don't consider themselves particularly religious. And a bonus site is the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception, which is the largest Roman Catholic church in North America and similarly architecturally stunning. Now, maybe you're a sports fan, and the good news is that Washington DC has a team in every pro league. Right in the center of downtown is Capital One Arena, a solid multi-purpose arena that has sports, and other entertainment. It's currently home to the Washington Wizards of the NBA and the Washington Capitals of the NHL. If you're a baseball fan, you can catch one of 81 home games every season at Nationals Park. It's a modern ballpark that's home to the Washington Nationals. And the area around the ballpark is also a really fun spot to have a game day experience. Audi Field is a sleek new soccer specific stadium in Southwest DC. It's home to DC United of the MLS and the Washington Spirit of the NWSL. And even speaking as someone who didn't really grow up watching soccer, this is a fantastic venue to catch a match. Now, what would this list be if it didn't have any food or drink options? When you come to Washington DC, you should taste some DC signature foods. These are things like half smoked sausages or wings with mumbo sauce, as well as foods from countries like Ethiopia and El Salvador. Or if you're able to splurge, check out one of many award-winning restaurants in DC. There are currently over 20 Michelin starred restaurants in the city. 
there are James Beard award-winning chefs in DC. Frankly, on a single trip, you will probably barely crack the surface of the dining scene. But if you wanna try, just make sure to get a reservation because these places do book up in advance. We might not be particularly strong when it comes to nightlife culture, but DC has a solid happy hour culture. Most bars and beer gardens and even some restaurants will offer happy hour specials and deals on weekdays in the afternoon and into early evening. Speaking of food, when you get hungry, try to find a fast casual restaurant. Washington DC has excelled at fast casual for many years. Maybe you've heard of places like Sweet Green or Cava or And Pizza. These are all homegrown, fast casual spots that have expanded beyond DC in recent years. And if you wanna know some of my favorite fast casual spots, good news, I have an entire video on that topic. And I think you should watch it next. So just go ahead and click or tap right over here. Enjoy your trip.